How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. So have you ever prayed a prayer like that? Asking God why he's forgotten you? Have you ever felt that abandoned by God that you would say that you no longer have a, a face-to-face relationship? This jarring language of the Psalms of Lament help us verbalize the deepest, darkest stuff in our lives and in our emotions and bring it before God. Did you know God wants you to bring up that stuff? Did you know that that stuff, that dark sadness, that feeling of loneliness, what disappointment, hurt, that all of it could be purposed in in a spiritual act to connect with God? So let's not ignore the deepest, darkest parts of our hearts and minds but bring them before God for transformation. You made it to 2021. 2020, who would have seen it coming, right? I mean, let's do a real quick recap. Real quick, real quick recap. Five times fast. Give it a, give it a try. Real quick recap. Real quick recap. Real quick, real quick recap. Real quick. 2020 in review. Would you like to... Uh, Mention something that happened to you in 2020? Well, let's let's get at it. Okay, we had a pandemic. We had the NBA shutting down and then bubbling up. Okay, all right. We had a number, a string of terrible, tragic scenarios involving racial injustice and the subsequent division in our country resulting over those events. We had an election and whether or not you could vote, you probably heard about it. That really brought people together, didn't it? We had murder hornets. We had forest fires. We had a lot of celebrities we love and hold dear passed away this year. And many of you had personal tragedies, right? Think of the the disruption to school life, to your sports, uh, to your extracurriculars, your friend group, the lunchroom table, all of these things, you were out of school and then back at school and and there's still this pending of like, when are things going to be normal? I, I'm still having to wear a mask and stay apart and I can't see as many people. The holidays, apart from family, many of you, obviously our youth group, we couldn't be in person after mid-March. And so the feeling of isolation and trying to do community life on a screen, finding creative ways to stay close together. But let me just probe and ask, what do you want to complain about most when it comes to 2020 or even the beginning of this year? What do you want to complain about most? What do you want to bring to God's attention as an act of complaint. Guys, did you know that people throughout Scripture, the biblical authors, these faithful men and women who prayed to God, well, they lamented. Yeah, it's something we don't do a whole lot of together. Our culture is more of a, let's celebrate, YOLO, triumphalism. You know, when's the last time have you read Psalm 13 as the liturgy for your, for your church service? Where are you, God? Where are you? But here's the thing. 
the lament psalm was quite common for ancient Israel. They knew how to complain to God. In fact, a third of the psalms, right? There's 150 of these things. A third of them, like 50 of these psalms are lament psalms. So if that tells you anything about ancient Israel, if you feel like you have a lot to complain about, this isn't new. And in fact, these lament psalmists help us to understand how to approach God when we have complaints to bear. So let's take a look at how this works. Here's what you do in a lament song. You bemoan your condition to God. Think like maybe moaning myrtle. Maybe not quite like that, but you get the idea. Bemoan your condition to God. Be honest. Be frank. As, as we read in, in Psalm 13, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? That is David. David, of all people, a guy who's after God's own heart, bemoaning his condition to God. Then you state your trust. See, it doesn't just end with complaint. A lament is more robust. You state your trust in God. That's something we all need to remind ourselves of at times. The fact that you're dumping out your complaint to God is an act of trust in God. So state it. And then you offer praise to God. So lament, these psalms, help us move from our, the, we don't ignore the, the big feelings. We don't ignore the huge complaints. We don't ignore the challenges in our life. We bring them to God, assuming that God not only hears, and not only cares, but is in control and can answer us. So why would we be driven to lament? Why might you lament in 2020? We can think of this as a corporate thing, and we can think of it as an individual thing. And I hope to kind of blend those a little bit together as we have all been through the collective trauma of 2020. And we need to lament that together. But we also have these individual burdens we carry. So let's take a look at common occasions for lament psalms. So mockery or slander by personal enemies. Have any of you ever had issues with friends or frenemies at the lunch table or the bus? Warfare. I don't know that any of us have experienced that directly, but that is certainly a lamentable occasion. Disease. Okay, now we're close to home. 2020 brought the coronavirus pandemic. And whether or not we wrestled directly with the disease we've wrestled with the effects to our society so here we are we have a, in our toolkit the lament prayer for a time such as this drought right these ecological disasters or the burden of sin and guilt so we've seen in the in the past uh, as we looked at jonah and we looked at amos and we saw kind of this uh disparate response between nineveh nineveh when it found out it was against god persisting in its sin, it entered a, 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 a repentance through the discipline of lament, right? They, they set in sackcloth and, and ashes and they fasted and they, they grieved their sin before God. And it's what Amos invited Northern Kingdom Israel to do, right? The, the place where Jonah was sent from. Amos went and invited them to think about the injustices they've perpetuated and to be driven into the lament of a broken society. And we invited us together into that effort for ourselves in 21st century America. Uh, we Christians who follow Christ lamenting the wave of injustices that we experienced in 2020. So we know that we can, we can do this for, for guilt, for complicity, for societal brokenness. All of these things that, that we have experienced as a society in 2020, as a church family in 2020, there is a toolkit in the prayer book of the Bible, the Psalms, called the Lament, and it can help direct us to God during these times in response to this brokenness. How does one lament? Let me read from Sung Chan Ra. He has become a, a, a big voice for the discipline of lament and its recovery in the American church. Let's read. Lament in the Bible is a liturgical response to the reality of suffering and engages God in the context of pain and trouble. The hope of lament 
is that God would respond to human suffering that is wholeheartedly communicated through lament. The hope of lament, my brothers and sisters, is God's response. We're not simply complaining to complain, we're complaining. We're offering our lament because we believe that God is responsive to human prayer. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is responsive? This is the hope of lament that God would respond. And keep in mind here, this is communicated wholeheartedly. Can we really articulate the dark doubts and frustrations and fears and regrets? We need to be forward and bring it to God, to be honest and transparent, to be wholehearted before him. What are we aiming for? Okay. You're tracking with me. You're like, yes, we've been through a lot. I have a lot. I've been sad about. I have a lot. Maybe I, I have some some guilt or or sin or or I'm not understanding where God is. All of this is whatever bowl of negative stuff you want to bring before God. What are we What are we aiming at? What do, What do we want God to do? This comes back to what do we view as wholeness? If 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 we are broken and or we've been broken or we're breaking ourselves or we're part of a broken society, all these things, the key word here, broken, the brokenness. So what we're aiming for by fully looking at the brokenness in our life and bringing it before God is for God to make it whole. It comes back to the concept of shalom. Let's read again from Sung Chan Ra. Shalom, therefore, does not eschew or diminish the role of the other or the reality of a suffering world. Instead, it embraces the suffering of the other as an instrumental aspect of well-being. Shalom requires lament. So, to be clear, what's going on here is part of being whole before God is admitting how broken things are. We saw this in the book of Amos, that... Israel did not want to admit how broken their society was. Israel did not want to admit how they participated in systems of injustice. They wanted to go to church. They wanted to worship God. They wanted to lift up their praise, and they wanted to continue their lives ignoring the needy, ignoring injustice, ignoring idolatry. And what lament does is it doesn't let you move past the brokenness. Because when we sit in the brokenness, like Nineveh did, we acknowledge it and we invite God to bring it together, to fix it, to correct it. Even if one of the things he has to fix and correct is the sin in our own lives. I found these in the river near a plant store on the, the, the middle fork of the new river. And it must have been broken shards of pottery. So just giving you some context here. And... It's like, imagine all the broken things you're holding right now. Your, your broken hopes and dreams for a better year last year. Your broken hopes and dreams for better relationships, better uh, whatever it is you wanted to do. If it's something you broke, you, you did something to yourself. You, you're, you are, are doing things that aren't helpful for the formation of your Christian character. You bring, if it's a deep assessment of I've been a part of injustices in society because I've been complicit in these structures that are that are uh, that are bringing other people down um, and we tried to bring those up in the in the Amos series and you want to bring all of the the brokenness before God so what are you carrying what's broken in your life where do you feel the broken places are in your heart and mind and soul. In order for this to be put back together, we need to give God all the pieces. Wholeness, shalom, requires lament. Let's say you bring all the brokenness. What does that look like? Uh, have you prayed a prayer as raw as we're imagining here, where you bring all the brokenness? It's going to sound like protest at times. Let's read here from the Dictionary of Biblical Imagery on this concept. Lament is a form of prayerful protest. 
There is a strong element of protest in many lament psalms, with the poet, in effect, chastising God for not having corrected a terrible injustice, and sometimes charging God with being asleep. We'll explore that more in our next Devo video, by the way. In addition to the protest element, a persuasive format is evident as the poet attempts to convince God, and at the same time his readers, that something needs to be done at once. Have you ever prayed that way? Have you prayed uh, chastising God? Is that okay? Have we prayed with that kind of immediacy that, God, I need you to do something right now? This sounds dangerous, right? And yet a third of the Psalms are lamentations so guys uh, if we haven't prayed this way we're missing part of what biblical prayer is perhaps we're missing a part of what god attempts to do when we bring to him our protests have you prayed this way about what happened in 2020 <laughs> have you protested to god did you know it's okay to protest to god so we'll be taking a look at some of these psalms. I know this sounds kind of weird what I'm saying. And is it okay to pray like this? And I th hope that over the course of the next few weeks that we'll get uh, an understanding of the richness available in our prayer life and our honesty before God, because this is actually part of our relationship with Him. If this was just protest or complaining or, you know, name it, like, bleh, if that's all it was, was let me just word vomit a bunch of stuff about how my life sucks or whatever, and we just left it there, I don't think we've done lament properly. Remember that slide about what a lament prayer looks like? It intersects with God. So let's read this little section from uh, Lindsay Wilson's article in A Time for Sorrow. The fact that the writers continue after the complaint is uttered shows that the mere pouring out of a complaint is not the goal. A lament is not just a venting of feelings, nor is it intended to stop with the voicing of complaint. So let's not stop there. Those lamenting seek a resolution of their distress, since the lament is an appeal for help. It is not simply a complaint about God. It is addressed to God. A lament is asking for change from the God who is able to bring about change. So do you guys get the difference here? It's not just a list of complaints. It's not just a, a rant. Although it's going to feel like that, right? Even this Psalm 13, like, where are you at? Why are you forgetting me? Come on. But it moves you in bringing it toward God because you are, it's an act of faith that God, all the broken pieces in my life, they're here. And, and bringing them to God is asking him to put them together. Lament as a prayer, as an act of faith. Are you bold enough to bring before God all the broken pieces that you can find and ask him for wholeness, for healing, for help. I don't know about you guys, but 2020 shook me. I think it shook us all. And I think one of the opportunities of the lament prayer, if we learn this, if we take seriously this invitation to bring before God our protests, our complaints, even our rants, and we sit with him in prayer in that, I think there's something that God wants to do there to reshape us. So let's, let's see this. This year and all the things that threaten to break us down and give us a lack of hope. If that's how you feel, if you feel downtrodden, you feel like, you know, is my faith strong because I'm, I'm actually sad? Is my faith strong because I, I'm having a hard time holding on to hope? Is my faith strong because, you know, X, Y, Z. You have big fields and you don't even know how to articulate how weird 2020 was and what, what does the future hold? 
Lament gives us an opportunity to be candid before God, to bring all the frustrations, all the disappointments, even all of the frustration with God that he would allow whatever it was to happen. That it sounds like a chastising God. Even David felt this way. It's in our canon. It's in our Bibles. God is showing us that we can be real with him. And that when we are, our hearts can be directed to him and restored. Our faith can be deepened. Our pains and our brokennesses can be acknowledged. And we can experience God's help. So let's journey together and learn how to lament as an act of prayer, as an act of faith, as an act of hope that all of the broken pieces in our lives, God not only cares about them, but he comes to fix them, even if it's not in our timeline, even if it's not how we want it to happen. We can grow in our relationship when we bring him the broken things. So let's be broken together. I challenge you this week to write a psalm of lament. I would like you to articulate your complaint to God while articulating your faith. But be honest, be candid. Write a lament, lamenting 2020. And maybe we can share them together during our youth group gathering. Guys, I think this is going to be a good way to start the year, to be honest about these things, about the brokenness that we've experienced together. It's okay to be broken. Let's direct our brokenness to God. Godspeed. Godspeed. Godspeed.